Hey guys, this is Will Doggett from loopsandworship.com and I want to show you guys how you can use Ableton Live to control ProPresenter. Uh, and this is, there's no translator apps used in this. This is just using ProPresenter's new MIDI module that they released today. Uh, I've messed with it for the past few hours and it is killer. Super, super cool. Uh, so I want to show you guys how to set this up. Quick five minute video. I'll show you what I'm uh, doing, how I'm using this. Um, I would encourage you to download this completely free. Uh, something I've done, this ProPresenter MIDI Cues Ableton file, that's going to include all these MIDI Cues that are already pre-mapped uh, to all the different functions that are available in ProPresenter. It um, allows you to work with those. Just make that available to you guys for free. You don't have to sign up on any newsletters. If you like it, check out the site. Uh, shoot me a tweet at, at WillDoggett, D-O-G-G-E-T-T. -T. Uh, send me an email, will at loopsandworship.com. Follow me on Twitter, at loopsandworship or at WillDoggett. Um, and if you like it, enjoy it, work with it. Hopefully it'll save you a lot of time. So let me show you how to set this up. We want to go to our audio MIDI setup. Just open Spotlight and just type audio MIDI setup. Okay, or you can actually start typing audio and this will probably pop up. We want to go to our window and click show MIDI window. Okay, we're going to enable our IAC driver, which is allow, going to allow Ableton and uh, ProPresenter to communicate. This is built into every Mac. You don't have to buy anything, don't have to download any apps. Super killer, super cool thing. Double click IEC driver, and we're gonna select device is online. Okay, that's gonna enable this device, allow us to work with it. In the port section, if you don't see this, click this arrow here. Uh, we wanna click our plus sign to enable a port, IEC bus. We're gonna click out of that. We're gonna move again pretty quickly so we can get through this. Now I'm gonna go into ProPresenter, I'm working with the demo version of this on this computer. The great thing is they're going to allow you guys to try this out. You don't have to pay anything. Even if you own ProPresenter, you can still demo this module within ProPresenter really easily. So let's go up to our ProPresenter window, uh, Preferences. Right? We're going to do click that or Command Comma is our way to get there, which is also the same shortcut for Ableton Live, which is great. I knew that one. Uh, we want to click Modules. And then we're going to do demo modules here and click OK because we want to try out all these modules that are included. Now to set this up, let's go to communication and don't pay attention. I'm going to delete that. All right. Now let's create a MIDI bus. OK, so we want ProPresenter to see MIDI that's coming through the IAC bus. So the way we do this, we go to add device here and then you guessed it, MIDI, right? Label, we can label this whatever, but we're going to um, just keep it to MIDI. Super easy to understand. Leave all these the way they're set by default. Core MIDI behavior is going to be a device. And then device here is going to be IC bus 1 and click save. Now you saw this before when I clicked in. If I click connect here, um, it's going to go change green and switch to connected, which is great. Next thing I want to show you in ProPresenter is if we click uh, MIDI setup here, you can see we have the option. All these are the commands that we can control via MIDI. I mean, this is killer, the stuff we can do. Imagine having your uh, lyrics guy, instead of working in a computer, or lyrics girl, instead of working in a computer, they can have a MIDI controller, APC40, uh, and can be controlling things with knobs and faders. Uh, super cool, the things you can do now. Imagine having an iPad building your custom controller, but these are all the things you can do with that. Uh, we can use this autofill option here. Uh, that's basically going to say MIDI note zero controls all or one. Um, in order to use the Ableton template I included, set click zero here, type zero, and then click autofill. And that's going to automatically program all these so that they work with those Ableton clips that I have included. One quick note, um, the note names in Ableton will not equal what this shows up here, but note zero in Ableton will control this. Okay, Note five will control this, but it's a different note name than what shows up here because live is going to start kind of a different place. That's completely okay. No need to worry there. So let's click OK. Uh, one other thing actually about this with the MIDI setup is as soon as we start doing this, you'll see the last used MIDI note show up here, which is great, and we'll use that in a second. But click OK, get back out of this, and let's go into Live. We want to go into our Preferences here. Uh, command comma, again, is our shortcut for that. We go to Preferences. We want to go to our MIDI Sync tab. And then in Output, uh, for our IAC driver, we just want to enable Track. Okay. If we click that, then we are good to go. A quick note about this, on any MIDI track that you want to send MIDI from Ableton Live to our IEC driver, make sure in MIDI 2, you're going to select IEC driver there, okay? Um, I'm typically, every time I do this, I'm going to set my MIDI from to no input, right? Because I want to make sure I don't get MIDI feedback, which is the same thing as if we play acoustic and our acoustic feeds back into the monitor or our mic feeds back into the monitor. We don't want that to happen here. So let's set our MIDI from to no input just save all of us a lot of hassle 
and frustration. So now I'm going to go to my recent set here, MIDI cues. Okay. And you can see as soon as I open this, everything is set to my IC driver and MIDI from is all set to no input. Um, so let me show you how this works. I'm going to select and call up playlist one, which is going to equal song one over here. You see it called that up. Let's close this window. There's my song. Um, and then I want to select slide one. All right, so that's going to call up slide one. I can select slide six, go over here, call it up slide six. Um, let's add a background to it. I can select this playlist for my backgrounds and then do video image one. Okay, you see that show up. Do video image three, you'll see it change. Um, all these are just going to call up things. I can clear all here, which is going to clear everything. Um, or I can go back to a different slide, different video, right? So this is all really, really useful. Now, the other thing that uh, is important to note two things really quickly. One, all of these MIDI clips are set for different things, right? So this MIDI clip is set specifically to call up a video or background kind of playlist, and then this would call up the image within that. I could use one MIDI clip to send all those, uh, all that data at the same time if I wanted. Uh, if you want to do that, and once you figure all this out, you can build some of your own clips. Uh, maybe give those away for free after you build that template, just to encourage people to do this. But I want to show you how, oh, one other thing too, when you're clicking on a clip in live, remember it's always going to correspond to this up here, which is our global quantization menu. So when I click this clip, um, it's not going to launch immediately, right? It's going to wait to the next downbeat of one. We can disable this on a clip by clip basis. So if we click our launch box here, we can set our quantization to none. So as soon as I click that clip, doesn't matter where it is in my timeline here, it's gonna start playing automatically. Um, so you could go through, select all these clips and set their quantization to none if you wanted. So that as soon as you click something, uh, like say, as soon as we click clear all, we want that to happen immediately. We don't wanna wait to the next downbeat of one. Um, so that's great. That's how we can use this and how we can do this. But let me show you really efficient way. Actually, I'll show you how I have this kind of built in here. This is an awful example of a demo, but again, hey, I've worked with it for a few hours, but I wanna show you. I've built this over in Arrangement View in Live, and what I did is I created uh, some MIDI clips and loaded them in here using this file. All I did is just selected what I wanted. So for instance, I just select slide one, and I would just drag this like right there, or into one of these slides, right? Uh, slide three, I could just drag right there if I wanted and load that in. Um, once I access this little preview, um, this Ableton template, set that I created for you guys, you can just click that arrow and access everything you need, which is really, really cool, really useful. So what's gonna happen here is I'm gonna turn my click on. This is the most boring set list in the world. Every song's three songs, every song set to 120. Um, but it's gonna work for the example of this. What's gonna happen is first, we're gonna call up our video image playlist, and then we're gonna call up, I think, our first video clip in that playlist. And then we're gonna go to playlist one, which would be song one, and select the first slide there, the second slide, the third slide, the fourth slide. Then at the end of that song, we're going to clear the slide, go to our next song, right? Um, and go to our second playlist, which is song two, all those slides, clear, three. And at the end of everything, we're going to clear all slides, so we'll go to black. Um, I'm going to hop over into Pro Presenter so that you can see how this happened. So let's press, press play. Actually, let's clear everything before we start. Clear all. So let's start fresh. Here we go. Okay, so that caught up video image one. There's our video image song one. And there's slide one, slide two, slide three, all right, four. And then we clear all, go to song two. We're switching all these. You can see what's happening over in live, all right? Go to song three, and then we're gonna clear all. So this is really beneficial, really cool way to do this, uh, controlling Pro Presenter with Ableton. Quick note, you could, uh, and you may have wondered, why in presentation actions? Why don't I just do next playlist, go to the next song? Why don't I just do next slide? The beauty of this is if we have it set up this way, then I can actually hop back to song two and I can skip around and I can access, directly access a place in my playlist, a song in my playlist, or a slide in my playlist. So I can press song two and it's gonna automatically go to song two, whatever those slides are. Um, I can go to song one, whatever those slides are. And I can even skip back to, let's say my course here, and you'll see it skip back to slide two. Um, so I can have all my loops, all my clicks running in Ableton and skip around within my set list this way and everything's going to fall in Pro Presenter on my video backgrounds. Super, super killer. So hope you guys enjoyed that. If you have any questions, again, uh, so send, yeah, feel free to send me an email at willloopsandworship.com. Uh, hit me up on Twitter at Will Doggett, D-O-G-G-E-T-T. -T. 
um, at Loops and Worship. Uh, loopsandworship.com is the website. Hope you enjoyed it, and let me know if you guys have any questions, and show me what you guys have done with this. Looking forward to seeing it.